Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Erica, and I am here to talk to you about my stitching, a tiny bit of haul, and my special 4,000 subscriber giveaway. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy today's video. I will chit chat for a little bit in the beginning about life and family and whatever. Um, but if you want to go straight to the stitching, there will be a timestamp below so you can just see uh, like what minute to pass to, so you don't have to listen to me ramble. If you are a returning subscriber, I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I am so happy it's October. It is my favorite month of the whole year for a multitude of reasons. The weather, my birthday, the weather, fall colors, Halloween, fall food, being cold. Oh my God, I love being cold. <clears throat> so I woke up this morning and I could tell that the house was pretty cold and I actually meant to look on my kids. I have a monitor still in both of their rooms to see what the temperature was because uh, I just, you know, I don't want them to get too cold at night, but we did live in Alaska for three years, so they're, they're used to sleeping in cold weather. Uh, their rooms would consistently be low 60s probably in Alaska. Uh, and I woke up this morning and the house was 64. So we might have to start turning on the heat soon. I don't know. Their rooms were a lot warmer because they're, you know, all the bedrooms are upstairs <clears throat> and so the hot air rises and there it's usually five degrees warmer than what it is downstairs um, but I love it and I'm so I'm wearing a sweater and I was gonna wear the super cute Halloween shirt and I have this necklace my son made how cute is that it's like a little um, Frankenstein charm and they're all wooden beads and so when we lived in Alaska there was a there was no Hobby Lobby but there was a Michaels and a Joann's and the Michaels caught fire one year, <laughs> like right before Halloween. I was so upset because there's like two things to do in Alaska. I mean, there's no Target, there's no chain restaurants, there, there's a Denny's I think and that was about it. Um, and this is Fairbanks, so this is interior, middle of nowhere, Alaska, not Anchorage, which is amazing and I would live at in a heartbeat. <clears throat> but it caught on fire and so throughout the whole Halloween season that year we couldn't go and no spooky town for me uh but when they reopened probably I think it was closer to Christmas time they had these giant black trash bags for two dollars and it was Halloween decor and arts and crafts so someone posted on Facebook I think it was one morning they were like oh Michaels has the grab bags for two dollars if anybody wants them. I, I was there in like 10 minutes flat. I Boom there. I bought eight bags or not eight bags. I bought eight dollars worth. I bought four bags and they are I'm, I'm serious the giant black Trash bags and you couldn't see what was inside. So they were a mystery. Oh my I It was one of the happiest days of my life Like I vividly remember taking them home and being like, oh my god, and, and it was just these things I, I still have like 20 of these um, bracelet and necklace kits face painting, wooden uh, toys to paint, tons of stickers, uh, skeletons, floral, like Halloween floral. Oh my God, I was, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Anyway, so we have a lot of these uh, and we need to make some for the grandparents he wants to make some for. So we, we sat outside and did these one night this week. It's really nice, like the weather's been in the 70s. And the high, Monday I think it's like 75, and then Tuesday the high is 38. Okay, Colorado, let's make up our minds. Uh, and it's supposed to snow, which I'm excited for because I love the snow. People here complain about it, but it disappears in like a day or two. How I, it, It's just going from Alaska where there was literally snow on the ground eight months out of the year. It started snowing in September, sometimes even August, and the snow never melted because it never got warm enough. So it would just get higher and higher and higher and higher. And then in May, it would have what's called the breakup when all the snow would finally melt and the whole town was like a slushy for two weeks. It was just brown, gross, dirty, melting snow everywhere. Uh, so people complain about it here and I'm like, but it's gone in two days. It's not here for eight months. It's beautiful. Like, how could you not enjoy it? I mean, I understand if like you were older or something and you might slip and, and, I, and I slipped on the ice here. I never once slipped on the ice in Alaska, but I'm here for three months and I slip on the ice and I have to go to the emergency room. <sighs> So my son's still traumatized by that too. It's like, do you remember when you fell at the bowling alley mall? I was like, yes, I remember. Thank you. It was extremely painful. Of course I remember. Anyways, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything spectacular. Oh my gosh, we went to a pumpkin farm. So on Friday, we met up with a local homeschool group and went to Long Neck Pumpkin Farm, I believe, in Colorado Springs. And it's nice because it was just 30-ish minutes 
maybe even less than that. So it was on the northeast part of town. Um, it was expensive to get into. It was just me and my two kids, and it was 30 bucks. It was $10 a person. And then we did spend five bucks to get a pumpkin, even though we grew our own. We grew white ones so that the kids could paint them since they can't carve yet, they're not old enough. But we did get a big orange pumpkin so that my husband and son can carve it together. Um, but it was really, I mean, it, it was, I'd never been to a pumpkin farm, but in my head, it far surpassed anything I could have imagined. So many games, hay rides, and everything was free with the admission. Uh, you could have spent an entire day there. Oh my God. They had these big metal things. I don't know what they're called, obviously. Full of corn. And that was like my kid's favorite thing to do. Like they just do dove in there and it was like playing in a sandbox, but it was a corn box. Well, these kids came home with corn in every single part of their body that they could. And it was all over like the couch, it was in their shoes, it was in their pants, it was in my daughter's diapers, like it was just everywhere. So then the next day, I guess it was yesterday, we went to Target to get groceries for the week and my son had found some corn in the car and gave my daughter a piece. I didn't realize she had brought it in the store with her. And we were looking, or I was looking at groceries and I turned around, girl has it up her nose. Of course, the first time any of my kids put something up her nose, it's her and it's food. So I quickly just kind of like pushed it out um, and it came out. And she's just sitting there laughing. She thinks she's so funny. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I guess that's all we really did was the pumpkin farm. Um, we did lots of Halloween crafts. We uh, did a couple of these. We did painting with cotton balls. My daughter's obsessed. She called them cotton balls, cotton balls. So we just got Halloween colored paint and painted some printouts I got off, um, I printed out from online. It was a really good week. My daughter's talking so much now and it's so cute. Like she is just, oh my gosh, she got a, <laughs> she had a little leopard print hoodie or like not a hoodie, it's like a little jacket from Target yesterday because she has no winter clothes. She turned two last month. She's still in 18 month clothing. Um, she's third percentile for weight. I did not realize she was that tiny. We just had their checkups, I guess, last week too. Um, but we went to go look for winter clothes and thankfully she still fits into all of her snow gear from last year. My son does too. So we don't really have to buy much, just a couple long sleeve shirts and I guess that's it, like pants. And he, they got some for their birthdays. But I saw the cutest little leopard or leopard print with the little kitty ears like satin inside. I mean, it's way too fancy. Like she looks like a diva and I, I had her try it on and she was just so, like I have this picture of her where she's, she's so happy. She's one of her, she's got two Halloween costumes. Let's not get into it. One of them is a kitty cat. It was $10. It's just the ears and a tutu. Um, and she's, she really wants to be a kitty cat. She'll get on all fours all the time and pretend she's a kitty cat. But I sent a picture to my husband who was fishing and I had put the jacket up because I was like, it's $30, we don't need this. Like, you know, we try to be very mindful with what we buy. She she did need a, a jacket, but I was gonna get just a cheap zip up hoodie because she's gonna destroy it playing outside. Um, and he's like, did you get that for her? I said, no, I put it back. And he was like, you, sh you should get that for her. That's a sucker when cute little baby girl has on a leopard print hoodie and she's so happy. So she got a new jacket yesterday um but it's so funny like anytime that's where i was going with that with her language and I'm, then i'm done and then we'll get into stitching yeah i just got an etsy order hey um anytime she sees something she wants she'll go me <laughs> like she's she doesn't normally talk like that but i don't know what where she gets this inflection from but she me me or if she sees like something she wants like a uh, food My, me give in dork she's just so dang cute um anyways okay so we'll get into whips let me write down the time so it's 8 50. like i said i'm just so happy i'm so oh my gosh and i had my for those of you who have been following like my little medical drama unfolding like an episode of er i actually never watched er um episode of house i watched house <clears throat> I had so many people and they heard that was my last name. Oh, is that your dad? And I'd be like, yeah, my dad actually is Dr. House. He's got a PhD if you want to be cool about it. Uh, but anyways, I had my stress test for my heart on Friday <clears throat> and an ultrasound of my heart. And that was really cool. Like I, I walked into the, the room the, and the ultrasound tech, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm pregnant again because laying on this table with a big ultrasound machine right there, but they were checking here and not here. Um, and then the stress test was insane. Like I, <laughs> I told the lady and she probably hears it all the time. I'm like, oh, you know, I have a treadmill at home and I run pretty often. Like this will be, this will be fine. Like I think I'll be okay. And you know, it doesn't matter how good of a runner you are. They're gonna push you until you get to your maximum heart rate, which for me was 185. 
And what killed me was that it wasn't speed, which I, I mean, not that I could do consistently for a long time, but I could run at a seven minute pace for a minute or two and get my heart rate to the maximum. No, 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 no. They wanted to get the incline up. So for anybody who's ever been on a treadmill incline, they got this mofo to set 14% incline. And like, I don't even remember the speed. But she was like, okay, your heart rate's there when you're done, let me know. I was like, I'm done, I'm done, please turn it off. I can't do this anymore. Oh my God, it was awful. Okay, now I need to re <laughs> rewrite the time because I went on a tangent. But anyways, I should get all the results back from all my testing soon. And I am excited to hear uh, what they say. I feel much better. The doctor, the cardiologist was like, I really think you just need six to eight grams of salt a day because you're just not getting enough salt. So I've been drinking B8 every morning and I feel like a champion. Spicy V8 is amazing for those of you who need some more vegetables in their lives. It's actually really good. I get the little small cans. Okay, moving on to whips. Can you guys tell I already have my coffee? Maybe that's what it is. I usually have my coffee here <laughs> and I already drank it this morning. So I'm like, Jesse Spino, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Okay, Prairie Schoolers Christmas Tree Farm. Um, I worked on four things this week. So you guys will have a nice little four of my seven whips. Nice little variety to look at. Um, I worked on this part of the little path and started the kind of the border down here. Or not border, but this, there's this little up and down thing. Did some trees, worked on this house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of the red. I don't know if I have any more of this specific DMC in my stash, so I need to check. Um, but, cause there's a red truck down here too and, and I'm not gonna have enough for that. I don't know if I've mentioned this before with this pattern, but if you do it, be very, very careful with this pathway. It, I have had to rip out a decent amount because it's just, it's very hard to read on the pattern. Like here, it doesn't look too complicated, but okay, I think there's something that goes there. It's just really easy to mess it up. Um, but this is on the 14 count opalescent Ada which I love and I oh here so here's a question for you guys I was gonna try to rip dye some Ada fabric last night at like 11 30 at night because I don't know what got into me and I started watching tutorials on YouTube and it was like really complicated so if anybody has a super easy way to rip dye Ada I have three big rolls of it that I found in my husband's cross stitch stash for those of you who watched that video and it's white and I got purple Ada or purple writ dye and brown, I think. And so I wanna try to make some cool modeled fabric with it, but I want an easy thing. Like I love Jen Crafts, she's a local girl and I came across her video, it was like one of the ones that was suggested to me. But oh my gosh, it's like you gotta soak it and then you rinse it and then you soak it and then you bake it and then it's like a four hour process and no. Is there any, is there an easier way? Is there, but I want it modeled too. And like hers turned out beautiful. She obviously knows what she's doing. She, do, she does it very well. I'm just really lazy. So if anybody has a lazy way of doing it, please let me know. Uh, this is in my project bag. My shop is linked below if anyone's interested. I, I think I might be all out of this. I got some of this blue dot fabric the other day just to fulfill one order, I think. And when I'm done with that order, I'll see how much fabric I have because I, I don't know if I have any, any more left. So this is my Little House Needleworks Christmas Village. I'm so excited I got back to working on this today, or this week, because the end is in sight. I mean, I know I have a lot of work left to do, but the end, the end is coming. So let me just fold this over real fast. This is what I worked on this week was, well, what is it, the shadows, the florist. So you can see I did the word, and I just need to go in and fill in everything still. And I have lots of little details left to add on all the other um, houses and shops. Lots of snow to put in. Uh, once I finish the actual charted designs, I'm going to go in and probably add, this is cumbersome to hold up, more trees and stuff, like maybe some trees back here, or I think there's gonna be a tree here but I'm just gonna go back in and kind of like, there's a big gap right there. I need to put stuff in. I might put like a snowman. Oh my God, that would be cute. <gasps> With a little orange bees for a nose. Oh, they have the long ones. Look at that. Like that. That's a good look. That's gonna be my, my cover photo, I'm sure. Thanks, YouTube. But 
anyway, so there's the florist. That's what I worked on. Oh no, I dropped some thread. Okay. And I've lost my needles. Like I bought, I, I like Bowen size 26. And I thought I had a whole like set of them. I know I do, but now I can't find them anywhere. Oh well, they'll come up eventually. Oh no, I just zipped a bunch of threads in there. There, I fixed it. Uh, all right, moving on. Two more. I am also, oh my gosh, it is getting real bright in here. So the lighting's gonna be kind of crazy for just a second. Actually, let me go pull the blinds down real fast because it's like, oh, my eyes. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Hi. Um, now I'm all distracted again. Oh, I am feeling a finish frenzy. A finish cross-stitching, a actually fully finished, like there are so many things. I have this beautiful Santa sampler, I think from Country Cottage Needleworks that I finished. It was might have been one of my first pieces earlier this year. I need to fully finish it. Don't know how I'm gonna do it. I know I wanna frame it. I really wanna start making some pillows out of things though, but that I don't think that would make a good pillow. Um, I have my 1929 reproduction piece that I charted that is in my Etsy shop and it's so pretty, but I just need to fully finish that. Um, I just, I know I talked about this last time. Anytime it comes down to end of the day, I'm done working. I work like 8.30 to 10.30. I, when it's 10 30 night, I don't want to finish anything. I ain't getting glue guns out. I'm not looking for fabric. I'm not making bows. I want to sit down in bed and cross stitch. So that's what I do. But I really, I might start looking for a babysitter because I need the extra help at this point. Like the shop is consistently busy. And I, if I had a babysitter come over just like one morning a week for four hours, I could get a considerable amount of my work done then for project bags and then I could use nighttime to actually sew for fun cross stitch finish cross stitch pieces I just we don't know anybody I mean we know people here but they all like all the people I know have kids too they're I mean I guess I could do like play date slash babysitting but it's just a lot to ask like as me as a mom with two if you ask me to babysit your two kids and I gotta watch four kids for four hours I'm gonna have to really really like you and you should pay me in wine. Um, okay, so this is the tiny modernist medieval castle. I'm gonna I'm gonna be lazy and not pull the, the pattern cover out. This is only available, the pattern is available through Lakeside Needle Crafts. It's a UK shop, but you can get it as a PDF. Oh my gosh, it's always so pretty when I see it on camera. So as much as I hate this rectangle fabric, don't get me started on this again, I do really like the color of it. This is my first time stitching on something that's not brown cloth. I really like, and even white. I, I have nothing against white. I got some, this opalescent white Ada I'm using. I have um, regular white Ada. Like, I like white, I like brown, but I don't really like stitching on colors. Like, and I say that now, and I'm wanting to writ dye purple, but whatever. I guess I do like stitching on colors. Don't listen to me. So last time I had finished all of this and I think I might have started into the blue. Um, and so last night alone I got, cause I take Saturday nights off. I'll take Saturday night and one weekday night off. Like whenever I don't have a ton of orders or if I just really need a break. So I take two nights off a week. Oh, I take Friday nights off too. I'm sorry, I'm lying. And I didn't actually take last night completely off cause I made the project bag I'm getting ready to give away. But last night I worked on this, maybe just for about an hour and a half, and I got all of this. This is one of the turrets, I believe that's what they're called. It's gonna have like a purple and red, or not purple, like a reddish orange um, cone here. And then I got this part of their um, <clears throat> throne area. I, oh my gosh, this, I love it. I, I don't want to say it's my favorite thing I've ever stitched, but it's definitely up there. I would say this, Cathedral Woods Goddess, and my, maybe my Christmas Village are the things that have brought me the most joy in stitching and are just so fun to just even look at. So much color. I still need a back stitch, so this is going to look a little bit different. There's back stitching on the chandelier, back stitching around the chimney. Um, I need to finish, you know, this little part, but I love it. And I really wanted to make sure I had enough room on the top, and I'm going to. I'm definitely going to. 
because there's just one more level to do so there's that and they had done a stitch along for this I believe uh, when it first came out and not that I already said I don't do stitch alongs but I kind of wish that I would have at least been sewing or stitching this when they did that because it is really cool to see when there's a hundred other people stitching the same thing and seeing their progress and it's definitely it's motivating to me when I see how beautiful like Cathedral Woods Goddess that I'm not actively working on but I have a decent amount of it done when I see other people working on it, I'm like oh my gosh I really want to get back to that okay so last whip is Jack Frost Tree Farm I'm not quite sure how much I did on it this week, but I know I did work on it. Oh, I think I did a decent amount. All the trees. I don't think the trees were done last time. So this is on um, 28 count coffee tea dyed Monaco. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I really, really like this one too. The colors are just beautiful. I'm using all of the called for classic color works, except for the white. I believe it calls for something like eggshell and I'm using Blanc. Like straight up white that's French for white Blanc and DMC is a French company or they were started in France at least I believe so I got a lot of the trees done I got the border finished I still need to do there's like dark brown squares in each corner um, but that's it Ooh, it's so pretty I can't wait to frame this one this one's gonna look really pretty so I I always hesitate to say this because it, I don't think I've ever met a single goal I have ever set for myself for cross stitch, which is kind of crazy because I am extremely goal oriented typically. Um, but I, I really want to get this one done for Christmas to frame. My Christmas village will absolutely be done. That I could finish that one in two weeks if I made it like my focus. Um, and I might. I'm, I'm starting to really get back into it. When I sit down at night, I often think about doing that one. Um, I would like to finish all current Christmas themed projects by Christmas time. Uh, also, <laughs> okay, so right before I left for Florida, I dyed my hair, or parts of it, I bleached it and colored it myself, this really pretty teal, which has done a very good job in staying teal, and then a hot pink, which I used to dye my hair pink for years, and I know, I mean, it fades to like an orange very quickly, you can't even really see it. Well, I'm letting it fade out completely. I haven't touched it up at all because I'm going to change it all to teal. One, because it fades so fast and I don't like orange in my hair. And two, apparently I colored my hair to look like Wild Style from the Lego movie. I had quite a few people be like, I don't think it was on Flosstube, but like on my personal Facebook, they were like, oh my God, you seriously realize that you dyed your hair to look like the Lego character. I wish I had like a little version of her. She has black hair and then pink and teal stripe in it. I was like, no, I did not do it to look like Wild Style is her name from the Lego movie. But I agree, that's exactly what I look like. That's not really why I'm changing it. I just don't like the pink fading to orange so fast so if, if you see like orange in my hair or like these faded spots it'll hopefully be all teal the next time we meet okay so getting into some haul very small I got some stitchy kindness from my own mother and some haul um so I picked these up at Hobby Lobby they are the iron on um embroidery patterns Aunt Martha's I have had oh my gosh not these but I I have been using these for so long I did I think I cross stitched first and then I got into embroidery like 10 years ago I, I when I lived by myself I had an entire wall covered with cross stitch and embroidery and it was all in the hoops because that's all I could finish I didn't know about finishing and anyways um, a lot of the embroidery was like snarky weird weird stuff like just I I was gonna say I was a strange girl but I, I'm I'm still a strange person for those of you who have seen the movie The Human Centipede, do not look it up if you haven't seen it. If you know what I'm talking about already, that's all you need to know. I did a embroidery piece based on that. I do like rap lyrics, like, cause I used to have 212 subs in my trunk because I was just, I thought I was very hood at some point in my life. Anyways, Aunt Martha's, uh, these are the primitive Christmas ones. I have never seen these before. How freaking cute are those look at the little mouse ice skating so I picked up these for two bucks um, and they are a decent size I'm pulling out it's not like you can copy the pattern they're just embroidery 
If you've never tried embroidery and you want to, you can 100% do it. It's back stitching. Just like you back stitch and cross stitch, that's all you have to do and you can embroider. Look how cute. So you just iron it on your fabric and back stitch over it. So I already have a ton of DMC and even fancy floss. I'm gonna pick some really pretty Christmas colors. And then yesterday I had to go to, I, I, I don't know why, but I, well, I do know why. I call it Snobby Lobby, because they're just kind of snobby there. I went to Snobby Lobby and I got just some off-white, this really pretty khaki Kona cotton. So I'm going to embroider that on those. I thought at first about making them into pillows, but I think they might be a little bit too small. And also my kids are savages, and so they'll just destroy everything. I don't really want to frame them though, and they're too big for ornaments, so I don't know. If you guys have any ideas for what I can actually do with these, Again, I could do like towels, um, but I wouldn't use them because my kids would destroy them. So the only other thing that I, well, the next to last thing that I purchased is this Disney birth announcement I got off of eBay. I, cause you guys know I was like real into Disney dreams for like two days last week and now I'm past that. <laughs> but no, I'm still in a Disney cross stitch and I really like this one because they look the most realistic out of really any of the other patterns that I've seen and I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna put anything there I might put my own name there because I am basic and I thought that, that would be really funny um, and I love princesses like my daughter she's just now getting into frozen like both of my kids really like frozen mostly because of Olaf um, but she gets excited anytime she sees it so my plan right now is just to stitch this top top part and frame it their faces, they look a little like, she kind of, she kind of looks a little hoochie coochie. That's all, okay. that's not a bad word. I say that sometimes with my daughter. And she's walking around with like, just in her diapers and surround herself. I'm like, look at you, like, like a little hoochie coochie. So I kind of get that vibe from Belle here, but I'm all right with it. And like I said, I think that they look very realistic, which I like, I mean, realistic enough compared to most of the cross stitch patterns. And it was only $10, including shipping. And it's fully kitted up. It's like they gave it to me, like for free almost. So I had to buy it. <clears throat> okay, so the only other little bit of haul that I purchased, I'm not even gonna show you, it's just all of the DMC needed to start this top pattern, which is so pretty. And the DMC, that the rest of the DMC I needed for Cinnamon Stars. And I have the Weeks Dye Works for the main part of the house and the roof but I got it DMC for everything else. So, <laughs> I only have seven whips. I mean, I could start one right now. Oh no, and I did start my charity pattern. That's gonna take me longer than I expected, you guys. Holy cannolis. It's like a five inch square, but you'll see what there are a, there's only like seven colors, all DMC, but there's a lot of color changing and hopping around. I, I think I started stitching it on, 14 count because it was just too much counting for me and I'm still not really confident in my ability to count on 28 count like if I have to go five over eight down and then you know two down something like I, I'm gonna make a mistake if it's with the 28 count it's very difficult so with the 14 count like it's super easy to count those um, but I did start the charity pattern this week I'm hoping to have that finished I, within the next week or two like I'm doing the best that I can Whenever I put it up, I'm going to keep it up through Thanksgiving because I found an amazing charity I want to support and it does have to do with feeding and, and Thanksgiving time and food and food pantry. So that should be up soon. Um, so technically I have eight whips now, but I, I really do want to, I really want to finish something before I start something else. So I still not sure which one of these I'll start next that either this top one or this one, but I will be starting one of those like ASAP. Now I also may start, and this is, I, I'm not even gonna wait to finish anything, my Egyptian Chatelaine. I got the fabric for it last week. I haven't started it yet, but that project's gonna take me, I mean, honestly, probably two years. So I'd rather just go ahead and start it, put in 100 or 200 stitches every time I think about it, a um, couple times a week, and just start chipping away at it very, very slowly. So that you might see next week as a new start. Um, okay, so the little stitchy kindness that I got, when I showed my mom, because I'm 12 and I like show my mom everything I buy still, when I showed her these, she was like, oh, I have a ton of those. 
but I never, I'm never gonna use. Do you want, do you want me to send them to you? I was like, of course I do. Like, thanks for just hoarding them and not sending them to me if you're not using them. And so she sent me this huge bag of embroidery stuff. Some tracing, or transfer pencils, some cute little kitchen towels. Oh my gosh, I could put one of them on the kitchen towels. I just, like I said, my kids, you can tear up everything. Some embroidery floss. I don't, it's not DMC, it's Iris, which I've never heard of. Um, but it, I'm sure it's gonna work just like DMC. And then the rest of it's all, I think there might be some transfer paper in there. Just lots of old Aunt Martha iron on patterns. So how cute is that? And some more patterns in there. So that might be something else that I start this week. Embroidery is just so nice because I can do, you know, like if, like this house, okay? If this house was a cross-stitch piece that was like a, you know, five by seven finished house, that would take me two weeks. With embroidery, I could finish that in two days. P pretty easily, I would think. I mean, it's been a while since I've done embroidery. I think it's been a while. Like it's, gosh, I guess it has been like years maybe. Um, but it just goes so much quicker and it's very pretty still, and especially because like I, I didn't use the variegated threads before and I think that would be really cool like to do the green, the tree in a green variegated thread and a wreath. Ooh, maybe do some crying for the stars. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get real fancy with it. Okay. So giveaways. Last week I was giving away this bag, which I have no idea how you're going to actually cross stitch, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. And it's a really cool idea because uh, it's, like I said, it's like a 14 count, oh, there you can see it right here, 14 count um, fabric just on the front portion. It's like a, a rectangle. Very cool tote bag, but you're going to have to like stitch with your hand like all up inside of it. Like this. <laughs> um, but this goes to Bridget Shamrock is an awesome last name. So Bridget, if you could email me your address, my email is listed below and we'll get this out to you this week. The giveaway winner from last week just emailed me, might have been yesterday or the day before, um, Loretta. So I have your email. Thank you for sending it to me and I will get your giveaway out this week as well. Sunday is a pretty big work day for me. My husband's got the kids right now at McDonald's. They're so cute. My kids are both, because they eat very healthy, 90% of the time and then every Sunday lately, I think really since I started doing these floss tubes, my husband takes them to, um, it used to be Dunkin' Donuts, but now we've got some gift cards to McDonald's from my grandmother. So they've been going there and they're obsessed with pancakes. As soon as my daughter wakes up, she's got like the craziest bed head ever. Like, I mean, not down here, she doesn't have a beard, but it's like up here, she looks like Einstein. She wakes up, she, pancake, pancake. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it's pancake day. And they get their chocolate milk. They never share any with me. Not that I can have it anyways. Thanks, celiac disease. Uh, okay, so today's giveaway, I'm so excited. Uh, it was a, It's for celebrating my 4,000 subscribers and I think I'm already at like 4,100. So I promise next time I hit 5,000, I will have the bag done in an appropriate time. Um, but this is, okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's so cute. Fabric I bought months ago when I first started making project bags and I think I got it just to make for myself. I, I came across it on Etsy and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. I bought a very small quantity of it. I don't know, I don't even know who the designer is or if I can find it anymore, so this is it. I do have enough fabric left over to make another one and I believe I'm going to make it and auction it off. I'm stealing Michelle Bendy's ideas, um, but I'm gonna auction it off for the charity next month because we, oh, I donated, we donated $165 to the local no-kill cat shelter here thanks to my trick-or-treat Halloween visitor charity pattern that you guys purchased. $165. I was so happy and so grateful that I could do I'm getting teary-eyed because I'm so emo. I'm so grateful that I could do that. I worked as a um, office manager slash kind of kennel assistant like I did everything at a cat clinic years ago um, and we worked with cat rescues this was in Destin Florida and I know these people that run these animal rescues you guys they're obsessed with their animals nobody starts an animal rescue dog cat mouse it don't matter unless they are like weirdly obsessed with their animals 
and and it's I'm very happy that those people exist in the world because they do they bend over backwards they sacrifice so much of their own money like I don't know specifically if this woman or I'm assuming this person that runs this charity spends a lot of their own money but I'm just saying from all of the people that I know personally who work with or run these animal charities <clears throat> or animal shelters they spend a lot of their own money so I was thrilled that we could do that um, my goal for this next one is $200 so hopefully you guys like the pattern I really hope you do and even if you don't you can still buy it and just give it to someone to do because it'll be two dollars and I'm gonna auction off two bags because I have fabric that's similar than two bags anyways I'm gonna show you guys the back okay so here's the front it's this really cool orange um, I don't it's not I guess it's modeled like an orange modeled fabric oh and what is that? Kitty cats? It's a crafting kitty cats bag. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why this bag. I just love it and it cracks me up. Anything to do with cats. Look at these freaking adorable cats. And there's sewing and there's buttons and there's knitting. No cross stitch, but I mean, what are the chances you're going to find cross stitch cats fabric? Well, that would be a great idea now that I say it out loud. I just think it's the cutest little thing ever. And cats make me so happy, they're so funny. So, if you would like this bag to enter, just please be a subscriber, like the video, and check below, there's a link to my shop, just go to my shop and then come back here and comment and tell me what your favorite bag is. That's it. I would really be interested in knowing what people's favorite bags are in general. I mean, obviously I know which ones sell the best. Oh my gosh, you guys. <gasps> I have fabric coming this week to make two new bags. They're going to be amazing. The fabric is so cute. I have been eyeing fabric from this designer ever since I got into quilting, way before I started making project bags, but I could just never really, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. it's Alexander Henry. And I could just never really see making a quilt out of his fabrics. Like they're beautiful. But do I need a sexy Santa quilt? I mean, now that I say that out loud, yes, I do. Um, but I just never really bought them because I just didn't think it was practical for what I'd actually use them for. But they're gonna make some awesome project bags. So I can't wait, that should be here next week. So anyways, if you, if you would like to enter to win this, I will announce a winner next week. Just please be a US resident, like the video, comment with what, bag is your favorite for my shop i know it's a selfish question like i usually ask like what's your guys favorite movie and here i am being like go to my shop look at my bags find your favorite come back and tell me but like i said it would really it's a benefit to me I, to see what people actually are liking i always think that i know what bags would do well but then they don't <laughs> or the what the bag that i did not think was going to be so popular suddenly sells like crazy uh so it's just very cool for me to, see, to hear that from you guys and also i'm going to put in the project bag as part of the giveaway these two little kits i don't even remember quite sure where i got this one from but it's a cute little froggy and then this one I got when I bought the kits from the local lady like a week or two ago. She threw this in for free. Family is forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here before I forget. There's one and there's two. So there's an like I said, I have fabric to the like the let I have fabric that is similar to this that I will probably do as another giveaway slat and charity donation when I maybe hit five thousand subscribers. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, thank you for everyone who has supported my shop. It means the world to me. I know I've mentioned this before. I am saving a lot of what I sell or what I make from my sold bags to go to Disney. Um, I did, I added up like the total budget for the trip, including like all the little things that you don't necessarily think about, like the memory maker, which is $100. That's just there, and you don't have to have that, but I really don't want us to be on our phones trying to take pictures the whole time, and so it's really nice that they offer that service, and it's only $99 for military. Uh, I don't know what it is regular price, but I was like, yeah, so we need that. So I made this big list of every single thing I could think of that we would need to um, pay for, and we're like a third of the way there already. 
with what I have already paid on the trip. Um, so, and the trip's not for four more months. So we got this, we got this. I keep telling myself, it'll happen. I'm very excited. My daughter, like I said, is newly into Frozen. Um, my, both of my kids really like Olaf. They both already love Mickey and the Fab Four, Daisy or Donald, Goofy, Pluto. Um, they watch Mickey and the Roads to Racers, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, all that kind of stuff. But they're finally starting to get into the movies a little bit more. So I just, they're gonna, oh my gosh, we're gonna have the best time ever. It's not, the trip is not just for them. I'm equally, I'm more so probably Disney obsessed than they are. And I just can't wait. We take vacations as a family, not going to just see other family, which is still a vacation, but we, outside of traveling to see family, we've only taken one vacation as a family, and that was Disneyland two years ago this February. So we'll be going almost exactly two years later, and I can't wait, it's gonna be amazing. So I really appreciate everybody who watches my videos and subscribes and shops with me and buys the charity patterns like ugh, i'm just so grateful i i just i can't even articulate it well without starting to stumble on my words i am very grateful i appreciate everyone who leaves comments i'm so sorry i have not responded to comments last week or even liked them but i do read them as they come through but i need to sit down and do that I know I say it all the time, and I'm not unique. Every mom, is, every woman, it, you don't even have to have kids. We are all very busy. Um, so when my kids are here, which is seven days a week typically, <laughs> I am focused on them. And I try not to be on my phone too much. And even if I wanted to be on my phone, like they're two and four, they're all over the place. They get into everything. They're, you know, they have an attention span with activities for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I have to constantly like, let's go outside and play. Let's go for a walk. Let's do painting. Let's read a book. Let's help, you know, help me cook in the kitchen. So I pretty much have no time to do anything while they're awake. So I work for an hour over their naps and two hours at night, five nights a week. Um, and that leaves me like an hour a day to do things. And so I, I always typically cross stitch. I should be responding to comments. Um, I, if it's somebody asks me a question that like is time sensitive maybe, like if they're wanting to start a project or if they're wanting to buy something, like I try to respond right away when I see it come through. But otherwise it's just, it's difficult for me to get everything done in a day when there's only so many hours and I do need to sleep just a little bit. So I appreciate you guys being patient as I take forever to respond to your comments is what I'm trying to say. So, my kids will probably be home any minute now. Like I always think, oh, I can do my floss team on Sunday and then go do this or clean the house or fold some laundry. And it's like, they're always home as soon as I get done. So they'll probably be home any minute, but I don't have a garden to work in anymore. We're getting temps into the twenties this week. So I pulled everything except for my flowers yesterday because we still have some butterflies out front. So I'm just gonna leave the flowers out there until they, the butterflies no longer want them. Um, but that's freed up 30 to 45 minutes a day, just not having to weed and water um, and just har and harvest. Oh my God, I've got so many tomatoes. I have probably 30 or 40 green tomatoes that haven't ripened. Some of them may ripen, but I don't know if I'm gonna grow tomatoes again next year. I'm done with stitchy talk, sorry. So if you guys wanna peace out, I'll see you next week. Um, nobody in my family eats tomatoes. My kids don't eat pasta. My husband hates tomatoes. He'll eat salsa though but let's not get into that because he also refuses to eat onions, but he loves salsa. Um, and so I grew like 10, 15 tomato plants this year and I would get like two or three ripe ones a week. What am I gonna do with that? The only reason why I really grew all these tomato plants was to make marinara sauce for myself. Um, and even I only eat pasta like once every couple of months because I'm the only one that eats it and I have to eat it all for leftovers and I get sick of it. And so I did make a batch of marinara sauce last week, uh, yard sauce from Priscilla and Chelsea. I used their recipe, it was very good. But now I don't think I'm gonna grow them next year because I spent all this time and effort and energy and money growing 15 tomato plants to make one batch of yard sauce. And I, like I said, I've got a ton that are green, but they're not gonna all ripen. It's not gonna be enough to make some more sauce with if only you know 10 of them ripen. So I think I'm gonna try doing some fried green tomatoes because it's probably delicious. And I told my son about it and I was like, you can dip them in ranch. And he was like, yeah, I wanna try those. He's obsessed with hard boiled eggs right now too, which is weird. He saw me eating one when, or making, I was making an egg salad. And he was like, oh, I love eggs. Can I have one? I was like, sure. In my head thinking, you know, you don't love eggs, but I'm gonna pretend you do and we'll see what happens. He devoured it. And the next day he asked me for another hard boiled egg. I was like, okay, here you go. It's awesome. So my garden's done and I have all this free time now. 
I don't even think there's no laundry or dishes. I don't know what I'll do. Sit here and try to decide what I'm going to do until my kids come home and then they're going to come home and I'll have no time to do it. Story of my life. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I have, my birthday is not next week. It's the following week. So I've got one and a half more weeks left as a 35 year old. Oh my gosh, I'm going to run. Oh wait, I already, I already round up to 40. Never mind. <laughs> Math. <laughs> I was going to say, I want to round up to 40 soon. I already do. Yay. It's not bad. My husband will be 40 soon. I'm going to give him a real hard time about that. It'll be next year, but closer than me. Next week, I hope to show you guys some embroidery, a new start on my Egyptian chatelaine. And I also have a couple sewing projects. If you go to Hobby Lobby, they have those quilt wall panels that you can buy and put together really easily. I have like three of those I would like to work on. When I was there yesterday, there was a mom with two older girls that I have my kids. And she was buying a bunch of fabric and we got to talking and she um, is an amazing seamstress and makes clothing and quilts and rice. I think they're uses like heating pads and like everything. And she was talking to me about these tie or knot dresses, K-N-O-T, knot dresses that she would make for her girls um, using just cheap cotton from Hobby Lobby and that they would last forever. And so it's basically like a sleeveless triangle shaped dress that you would do buttonhole right here and then a strap that you would pull through and just put a knot on it. And so you could make it really adjustable uh, as they grow. And then she's like, and when they get much older, like if you make it when they're two year old, it's a dress. And then when they're four, they could still wear it as a tunic top with leggings. She was like, so they last forever and they're insanely cheap to make. I was like, oh my God, lady, you're a genius. I've never heard of this before. And I've really been wanting to start, not to start, but just to make a dress for my daughter, just to try it. My friend sent me a pattern to try as well that I still, still need to do, sorry, Christine. Um, and some knit fabric, I think, or jersey fabric or something like that. Um, but I don't know. I say maybe, I'll, maybe you'll see that next week, but you won't. Let's just be honest with ourselves. You're not gonna see that next week. You'll probably never see it. But you'll hear me talk about it for a couple more weeks. Okay, I'm really gonna go this time. Sorry, I've been saying bye for like five minutes. This is another long video. I've been really hyper. I got a good night's sleep and had a lot of good coffee. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I will see you next weekend.